on my channel, I've been covering Thunderbolt docks and hubs for quite a while, and I use and recommend them. I know a lot of you do have questions about using docks with a Mac, so in this video, I wanna answer some of the common questions I get about using Thunderbolt docks with Macs, which may help you decide if you should get one. Also, as a bonus, I'll give you my recommendation for the absolute best Thunderbolt dock. Now, first off, you might be asking yourself if you even need a dock, and the answer is completely up to you and your needs. A dock is, in essence, a device that connects to your computer to expand the connectivity options. When we look at Macs on the market today, you can find computers with severely limited number of ports like the M1 MacBook Air, all the way up to the 11 ports or so on the Mac Studio. No matter which Mac you have, if you find yourself needing additional USB ports for external drives and accessories or a card reader for camera gear, or even extra audio options or ethernet for a more reliable internet, then a dock may be just what you need. Personally, I use a dock on my desktop for my MacBook Pro and connect almost everything I need to it, including my external displays, SSDs, and ethernet. I use the SD card slot on this CalDigit TS4 along with the SD card slot on my MacBook Pro because I like to pull data off of multiple cards at the same time. Plus, the SD card slot on the dock is actually faster than the one built into the Mac. Using a dock gives me the ability to disconnect quickly all of the external devices connected to the Mac and go mobile, while also giving me the simple one cable solution for docking when I get back to my desk. There are many dock options out there for Thunderbolt 3, Thunderbolt 4, different port options, or even ones that come with built-in internal connections for SSDs. But once you decide what type of dock that you need, you have plenty of options to decide from. I'll leave a link below to a video I did comparing three Thunderbolt 4 docks. Now, I do wanna talk more about docks versus hubs, Thunderbolt 3, 4, USB-C, charging, and more. But first, I wanna thank Shockflow for sponsoring this video. EV sales are skyrocketing, and you probably are thinking of getting one, so that means you're going to need a good charger at home and on the go. The Shockflow G1 is a level two charger with a J1772 connection that's compatible with most electric vehicles. And it comes in either a 32 or 40 amp version, which provides up to 36 miles of range per hour. The design of the G1 is clean and modern, which will look good anywhere you connect it, including outside with its IP67 rating. On the front, you have two buttons that let you set the charging level output or take advantage of smarter charging by setting a delay before charging starts. The Shockflow G1 can be mounted in your garage for a permanent charging station with the included wall mount or packed up and taken with you on a road trip as a portable charger. Using the 32 amp version of the Shockflow G1, I was able to get 60 miles added to my EV in just over two hours. So if you are in need of a charger for your new EV, check out the Shockflow G1 today and save 10% using the code in the description below. And my thanks to Shockflow for sponsoring this video. Okay, so you've seen docks and you've seen hubs and you're wondering, what's the difference? Well, the truth is that the line is pretty blurred these days. While both docks and hubs can offer you additional port options, in general, hubs are smaller devices with fewer port options. Most hubs are unpowered, which means they don't have their own power brick, but some can pass power through them if you connect your laptop charger to the hub and then the hub to the laptop. I find hubs to be better suited for my laptop bag so that when I'm working from another office, I can connect external devices like a conference room projector. Docks, on the other hand, are usually larger with additional ports and are powered, which makes them better suited for a regular desk setup and can power a laptop with up to 98 watts of juice. For dock connection options, you're going to see Thunderbolt 3, Thunderbolt 4, and USB-C typically. Now, this whole thing can be a bit confusing because there are many different versions of USB and Thunderbolt 3 and Thunderbolt 4 all use the same connection as USB-C, which is, you know, right here. So to make it really simple, USB-C is generally up to 10 gigabits per second, whereas Thunderbolt 3 and Thunderbolt 4 get up to 40 gigabits per second. There are some specs of USB-C that can get up to 20 gigabits per second and USB-4 can get up to 40 gigabits per second as well. Yeah, I know. So you will want to check the specs of your computer and match the dock connection to what your computer can support or go with a Thunderbolt 4 dock, which will be the most compatible with all devices because it can actually handle all the USB specs as well. Now, I get a lot of questions around using docks and charging a laptop when other devices are in the mix, so let me clear a few things up. First, if you're using a dock with your MacBook and you find that the power adapter that came with the computer charges faster than the dock, you can actually still connect both to the computer without issue. Your computer will not pull power from two devices at the same time, and your computer is pretty smart about it. 
Your computer actually negotiates with the device for power. So when you connect a USB charger or dock to your laptop, the device will not just start sending power. The computer will say, hey, how much power can you give me? And once it knows, it will start pulling the amount of power it wants from the device. Also, when you connect two devices to a MacBook that can provide power, the MacBook will look at which one provides most power and pull only from that one. That means if your dock provides 60 watts of power and you also have MagSafe that does 67 or even 140 watts, the computer will only pull from the higher power charger. The second power related question I get is for desktop Macs. And if you're connecting a dock to a desktop Mac like the iMac or Mac mini, the computer will only pull power from its own power source and not from the dock. Third, just like the computer only pulling the power that it wants, if you connect a display with power delivery to the back of a dock, the display will not send power to the dock. So there's no worries there. And I think that's it for power related questions. So if you have any additional questions, let us know in the comments below. Next up is displays. And I get a lot of questions about displays and docks. The number of displays you can connect to a dock and use comes down to two things. How many displays does the dock support and how many displays does the Mac support? But also there is one other thing I'll mention in a moment. Most docks and many hubs come with one or two display output options. That might be in the form of a DisplayPort or HDMI or even DisplayPort over USB-C or Thunderbolt. The display resolution and refresh rates may also differ between the docks. So check the documentation to verify it will work with your displays. For the Mac, most Intel Macs will allow two displays connected to a Thunderbolt dock. The baseline M1 and M2 chips, like in the MacBook Air, will only allow a single display, except the Mac Mini, which can do one display over HDMI and one over USB-C or Thunderbolt. The Pro and Max chips can do two or four external displays, respectively, on MacBooks, or up to five displays on a Mac Studio with the M1 Ultra. Though when using a dock, you'll only be able to connect two displays through the dock. Now the curveball here is docks with DisplayLink. DisplayLink is a hardware chip inside some docks that lets you use additional monitors even if your computer does not support it. It works by installing a driver into your Mac and then it creates virtual displays that can be sent through the dock to a monitor. Now I haven't used DisplayLink devices in over 10 years so I don't have any current recommendations on docks with DisplayLink. However, the performance of DisplayLink displays may be reduced compared to a native display because your computer has to emulate or virtualize additional displays using the processor instead of a graphics processor. This can lead to lower refresh rates or lower resolution options depending on the device. So something to be aware of, but if you do have a recommendation for a display link dock, let us know in the comments below. And the last question I get frequently about docks is about daisy chaining. If you are someone who needs a massive amount of IO ports, you can daisy chain docks together and keep the one cable solution for connecting to a laptop or desktop. In my opinion, with that many ports, you probably want to use at least one other port on the MacBook for connecting devices. And that's because a single port on the Mac will only get 40 gigabits per second. Once you connect IO heavy devices like displays or SSDs, you can start hitting that 40 gigabit limit connection from the dock to the computer. So at that point, you may wanna actually use a second port on the Mac and get two separate branches of 40 gigabits per second. So if you connect a second dock to a second port on the Mac, each dock will get a full 40 gigabits of bandwidth. So that about covers all of the common questions I get about docks. And now for my recommendation of the best Thunderbolt dock. And surprise, it's the CalDigit TS4. Yes, this dock has everything I need in a dock with the right amount of ports, it's got a clean design, it's got a rear host facing port, and it's got fast charging stuff on the front. This is not a cheap dock, but it is usually on sale, so check out the link in the description below. And like I said, each person will have their own needs, so maybe the CalDigit TS3 Plus is perfect for you because it's got optical out or a cheaper price, or maybe even just a simple USB hub is all you need. You can find whatever you need. And if you're looking at Thunderbolt 4 docks, I just compared three of them recently, so check out this video right over here. Hit the thumbs up button if you liked it, hit subscribe if you want, and I'll see you next time.